All right. Welcome back to the Trading Triangle. Back for another week of charts and trade ideas and trading prep and all the good stuff. And uh, appreciate you guys tuning in live on X. We are live streaming on Wolf's platform as well, or, or Wolf's channel, as well as my own trader at Trader Nate here. And then we are live streaming on the Trading Triangle and Wolf's, uh, also Wolf's YouTube channel over on YouTube. So appreciate everybody tuning in. Be sure you subscribe, smash the like button. And with that, let's get to, you know, the usual Trading Triangle round. Sean, how are you doing today? Yeah, good. I mean, what a week that was, eh? <laughs> Fed power, early earnings. I mean, I'm exhausted and it's still Sunday. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know. The I know, day my off, brain's like yeah. swirling with all the information from last yeah. week. I like, I gotta slow it down. I feel you. <laughs> How about you, Kay? How you doing? I mean, as you guys said it, right? It was a phenomenal week. Um, and I really hope all the trades that you guys took probably were successful. Hopefully you got out in time. And that's what I was like. And next week's going to be a uh, banger as well. So we'll see how that plays out. It is. I have no doubt about it. We've got a lot of popular stocks, you know, reporting earnings. It should have some good volatility that comes with that. And with that comes a lot of trading opportunities. So definitely looking forward to that. Real quick before we jump in, our disclaimer, this is not trading advice, nor is it financial advice. This is all educational and in, in, informational uh, purposes only. I almost said infotainment, which I suppose that's what this is. So uh, thanks for tuning in. And again, subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, let's get to some charts. What do you think, guys? Let's do it. Let's do this. So we got a nice week, like you said, Kay, coming up. A um, lot to get to. But last week, we always like to look at how the performance was. And uh, yeah, look at Amazon kind of standing out. Meta, of course. I mean, what do you guys think about Meta's move? I, I think Meta took the crown for last week. I mean, you don't see that move on stocks of that level. Yeah, and and like... The move of bringing the dividend forward, like, honestly, it's pretty genius, if you ask me. Um, you know, you're thinking, we're at these levels. What can Meta do? Like, we've got to be peaked out here. And they're like, how's the dividend sound? <whistles> Up we go. It was an amazing move. Like, uh, yeah, I was impressed, quite frankly. Anything else, you guys? I mean, we had, like, players like NVIDIA. You had Tesla. But I think Meta just took over the week i would say Hard took all the headlines yeah yeah i really did let's keep but it going I, um oh go ahead we did we did say uh, um apple minus four um so that's interesting to see as well the, the one that let us all down unfortunately well, yeah but it wasn't too bad really i thought i mean the owner's call was pretty good and lots of positive things to say but yeah well, i think we highlighted a double top you know or at least i know i did mm. i think we talked about it i can't remember um, we, we but, about apple, yeah yeah, so the double top is there. And, um, you know, the one other name too, Google, was really red last week. So, yeah, it might be yeah. an opportunity there for those looking to go longer term with Google. Um, yeah, I, Meta, though, you're right. You guys are right. Uh, took off. And then NVIDIA, you know, it's almost like old news. Like, oh, yeah, how much was NVIDIA last week? <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, let's keep it going. We had the fear and greed index solidly in the greed. And I actually put a poll out on this on X, you guys. And people are bullish. Like, every, I thought we would have more uh, timid, you know, kind of thoughts. But I was like, hey, are we going to 500 or are we going to pull back? And it was, you know, easily two to one more upside. You feeling the same way, Kay? You feeling like we're bullish heading into the week? Yeah, I, I think so too, um, especially with a couple other stocks that are coming in and the guidance for all the, the big tech players were amazing, minus Tesla. Um, I mean, most other stocks are doing pretty well. I mean, the, the main reason you see 4% down in Apple is also Apple was trading almost at all-time high. So you, you need a real massive catalyst for it to you know go even further. Um, they did hint on AI, but they really haven't like no launch anything on ai standpoint so we'll see how that plays out but yeah still very bullish on the overall sentiment you too sean you bullish you're usually bullish right yeah <laughs> normally yeah <laughs> i mean all the time the market's making higher highs and higher lows it's hard not to be isn't it so i agree just, just riding that wave but yeah I'm, I'm definitely bullish that's for sure the trend is higher we will see that in the charts but yeah last mm -hmm. week you know vix still with a 13 handle spy up 1.3 percent qqq's up a percent Diamonds up over a percent, which I like seeing. I don't. I'm definitely a more heavily weighted in in DIA, which you know maybe I'm just talking my book here, but um, yeah, I, I like seeing that that move higher with industrials and then small caps did pull back. So um, we got to get above 200 for IWM, and it just won't do it. I think when it finally breaks, it's going to move, but we'll see. 
Bitcoin 43k. I can't remember. That's kind of flat, or did it actually make a move? Oh, yeah. It was up a little bit. It was up. It was oh, 42,000 right? last week when we. Yeah. So yeah. it's continuing to trend higher. I mean, just been great. If you've been in Bitcoin over the past year, you've been doing all right for sure. All right, and yeah, we got Trader AZ out there chatting about a bunch of names reporting this week, and we have a couple of them for sure. We've got Palantir charts, and uh, or a chart on Palantir, I should say, and uh, Disney, PayPal, NXPI. Look at all these names. We got reporting earnings this week, you guys. I, I don't even know where to start, honestly. <laughs> I mean, start top left and just start reading through them all. Caterpillar, I'm definitely interested there, you know. And Palantir also on Monday, which is after the close. Um, personally, I'm big in, in the semiconductor names, so I'm looking at Rambus, which mm -hmm. is after the market. RMBS got a chart on that. Um, what else, Kay? Um, from my standpoint, I think you mentioned a couple of them. I, I'll be looking at Snap as well. Um, not that I invest on it, but just like to track Snap. Uh, I'm also focused on a firm and Cloudflare. Those are the ones that I'm tracking this week closely because. And then, of course, Uber is there, PayPal is there, uh, Arm. Arm is some, you know, not a lot of people talk about Arm. It's also from the semiconductor standpoint. Yep. Uh, but I don't have a trade in it yet. Uh, but something, you know, we'll see how it plays out over the course of time. And then you've got some dividend players like Pepsi, uh, McDonald's. Uh, if you're a dividend investor, you probably are, in, you know, watching this as well. We were talking about PayPal before the, the you know going live here and you know the big announcement and then the kind of dud and then layoffs announced now we have earnings so paypal staying in the headlines you know i guess you know nothing like uh getting whatever whatever kind of uh you know headlines you can get positive or negative so <laughs> anyways that'll be interesting wednesday what about you sean what are you looking at anything else yeah the obvious, obvious ones obviously palantir disney paypal Big ones, but also obviously Alibaba before open on Wednesday. Looking forward to seeing what they can do. Q4 is obviously normally quite a good month for kind of retail, well, online retail kind of stocks. That's interesting to see what the results will be there. Obviously, yeah. Chinese aspect as well, which should be interesting as well. And also, I, I quite like the, the idea of Pinterest because I've followed yes. them for some reason and the last few quarters. And they've had a new CFO back in, I think, June, I think it was May or June last year. And um, they've really changed the company for, for the positive, especially from the financial aspect and kind of changing strategy. So it'd be nice to see that and kind of continue. And I will be streaming that on my channel as well, Pinterest. Uh, oh, school. nice. So, uh, yeah. So I didn't right know that. There. And I pump my fist <laughs> not because I'm big on interest, um, Pinterest, but because I almost teed you up for Pinterest. I was like, Sean's got to be trading Pinterest. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and here I'm we trading, are. <laughs> I'm interested so, in it. Yeah. 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 So that's cool. You're interested. Not trading yet, but definitely interested. So nice. Mm. And, um, you know, another name that's kind of off the radars, I think, but has if I'm not mistaken, it's at pretty pretty much at its lows or at least recent lows is Hershey, which reports Thursday before the bell. Oh. Um, kind of interesting before Valentine's Day. And uh, is that, yeah, it's, um, it's being in a rival of Mr. Beast chocolate, isn't it? Oh, uh, is, yeah, I guess so. Because <laughs> every time you see his video, it's like him, but his chocolate versus Hershey's chocolate. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah that's so right. It might, it might actually be. Quite bad, perhaps. It, you know, <laughs> honestly, know. it's just a, a bad claim. <laughs> Looking like at it. Hershey's chart, it, it has a pretty, on a weekly, it's bouncing off the 200-day moving average. Now it's above the 50-day, 20-day moving average. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, people have their opinions on which chocolate is best. <laughs> that That's like a whole whole other topic and debate for sure. Mm -hmm. And I would yeah. not put Hershey's at the top of the list, but they run a good business. I'll say that much. Mm -hmm. um, all right, guys. Yeah, a lot going on with earnings this week. So what else do we have here? Yeah, PayPal, Palantir. And is NXPI reporting this week? Maybe not. Maybe I just missed it. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, we've got Amgen. I mean, the list goes on. CVS, Uber. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep moving. But I think we're going to have a lot to talk about all week long. Looking forward to seeing the live streams and what have you. Um, all right, so the chart for SPY mentioned following the trend, higher highs and higher lows, you said, Sean. And uh, here we are. The trend line is pretty clear. The 20 day moving average is right there um, on the trend, kind of holding, holding court. And we had the 50 day move above the 150 day moving average. You guys know, I like the 150, the 20 above the 50 as well. So a lot of positive things going on here. Um, and we're marching to 500. I mean, I don't, like I said, the pollsters we're in and they, they're positive. And, uh, what, what do you see on this chart, Sean? What am I missing? 
you're not missing a lot. I mean, it's, it's very hard to analyze a chart that's just doing this, making higher highs, <laughs> higher lows, following a trend, um, because that's kind of the only thing you can kind of follow on with, isn't it? Um, if, if you have a previous resistance, then obviously you can probably talk about that, but obviously this one doesn't. So, uh, yeah, all-time highs, and I expect it to continue to 500. And for me personally, I think that's a psychological level, obviously massive, you know, half, half a thousand as well. So. Yeah, um, right. I think 500, I think we pull back a little bit, maybe towards kind of 450-ish. No, is that? No, yeah, 485-ish. Um, but yeah, I think that would be natural and just continue to trend up. And obviously, we've got CPI in a couple of weeks as well, so that would be an interesting report to kind of read through and get a kind of handle on the macroeconomic situation. So yeah, interesting stuff. What do you think, Kay? Well, I think from a protocol uh, Friday, the 2.2 protocol was 2.1. And for next Friday, it's 2.03. So looks bullish from that standpoint. Yeah, it does look bullish from that standpoint, from the chart standpoint. Um, the way I look at this is, what, what is the, the acronym? BTFD, right? We <laughs> pull back to the, the trend line, you buy the dip. And uh, until the trend line breaks... It should make you money. And when the trend line breaks, that's when you cut and you maybe take a small loss and wait and see what happens. And that could be, you know, a shakeout or it could be a reversal. But until then, keep riding the trend. All right. QQQ. I honestly hope you guys have more to say here because the same sentiment, Sean. I was like, what do you say here? I mean, it's just going to, it's it's now trying to make new, you know, push higher. I'm going to be watching for it to get above Friday's highs, I guess, and watching the 20 day moving average for kind of support. It's pretty simple. Anything else? Yeah, I mean, it's almost like looking for a breakout trade, isn't it? Which is sounds absolutely mad, um, <laughs> considering the move we've, we've been making since kind of October last year. Um, but that's again, like you say, with these markets and these trends, that's kind of what you that's what you, what you get really, isn't it? Breakout, retest, breakout, retest move on higher until you say um you know the trend is broken but yeah i think that 430 levels you've marked there i think if you can break that come down retest it move up um i'm not too sure it's like a, a, a fib extension maybe k you could bring this up next week and the fib extension for the for the qqq so i know you like doing that okay. um, so it could be it could be interesting to see that kind of thing perhaps play out so yeah interesting cool. things for qqq yeah. And then on the protocol, man, it's very, it's very positive. You had 1.8 expiration this Friday and it's 1.52 next Friday. And with volatility mm -hmm. still like in the 15, 16 range. So it looks positive on the protocol side. Yeah, it's I'll definitely. <laughs> I mean, I'm almost starting to think like, where are the contrarians at? Where are you guys at? Because this is when you should be popping in, right? Everything's very bullish. Everybody's very positive. And we just had an amazing week of earnings. The markets shrugged off. Like we got told by Powell, there's no <laughs> rate cuts in March, base, basically. I mean, there's no guarantee, but like it's basically what he said. And the markets were like, oh, that kind of sucks. All right, keep going. And exactly. uh, off we went, you know. <laughs> so I think uh, the earnings are really speaking loudly. And um, yeah, uh, we've got a lot to, I think over 100 companies report next week. So just more coming, right? <laughs> All right, Palantir, over to you, Sean. So yeah, Palantir. So this is obviously the earnings are tomorrow night. Um, after after the close tomorrow night for me, I like to sit back and watch a mitt with a beer and some popcorn and just enjoy the thing. No no nice. puts, no calls, no shares, just just going for it. Um, but yeah, you can see the implied move is the yellow lines. So fifteen dollars, you know, near enough, and uh, nineteen dollars as well, which you can kind of see. I've kind of attached roughly to the kind of support and resistance around them. Um, and we're kind of trading within this wedge, but of course, that doesn't mean anything until tomorrow evening. So I'm looking for kind of a move either way. And you can see the white lines breaking up, you know, for the higher one at $19, breaking up above it, coming down, retesting the $19 level. And what's that $21.60 level? And uh, on the contrary side of that is the $15 level. If we break down, come up, retest the distance, and then break that back down to $30.60 ish. Um, so that's the kind of moves I'm looking for. Of course, it could work out completely differently. It could also just not move on, and, um, which is very unlikely with with, with, uh, with Palantir. You can see actually on this chart about halfway through that green shield just above the RSI. That was the last earnings move. Really nice move up and obviously continued subsequently. Um, a few details around the stock. Um, so we're looking for you know, 0 0.04 EPS and revenue around 620 million. So it's interesting to see if we can kind of meet that, beat that, you know, that kind of thing. 
Um, and obviously guidance for companies like this, especially in the growth sector, um, we're looking for good guidance going ahead for the quarters ahead. Um, and obviously S&P inclusion, I think, maybe a few details around that, probably get a few questions on the owners call, which I'll listen out for as well. So a few things going for Palantir, obviously gonna stop talking now so you can actually have some thoughts and uh, yeah, what do you say? Man, I, I'm bullish Palantir. It's um, hmm. what I've got going on on my side is, you know, I, I like these anchored view ops and we've got a nice bounce support off of one and it's kind of pinching uh, between another, the other that I've got. So the t and then the 50 day moving average is also just above that. So if it gets moving and then we can get above 1750, that's above the, the 50 day moving average and above the anchor view up from the highs back in August of last year. Um, I, that's like what I'm looking at as the, the key level. So once it gets above there, I think that forms a nice swing trade higher, uh, to, you know, position potentially to jump in. Um, but yeah, I like I like the support it's been showing here. It's kind of retest retested this level near 16 a couple of times, and yeah, hoping that we we can see move higher. Totally biased opinion there though. Like I'm not I don't own shares, but I just kind of want, I've been tracking it for a while, and I'm thinking yeah, about yeah. trading this one for a move higher. So yeah, looking good. So would you be looking for like a, a retest of 17.50? Did you mention that? Was it or would you just want it to get through 1750? I would just want to get through. I would I would take a partial position on a, a strong move through. And then if it did retest, mm. you know, fill that out. That's, that's kind of how I okay. look at it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to your point, what you're getting at, I think, is like, how, when would you enter the trade? And I like uh, on this particular setup where we'd be getting through like the 50 day and what have you, sometimes stocks just take off and they don't get the mm. retest. And so I'll take maybe a smaller position and, and Palantir is one of those that, you know, sometimes that works out. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Kay? Oh, um, the put to call is 0.58 with implied volatility of 133. So that's amazing. So if you are selling options, you're probably going to get a lot of premium. And if you are buying options, then it's probably going to be very expensive. Uh, <clears throat> Looking at all the technicals as well, like, you know, you do see uh, the signal trending positive on the MACD as well. And then I feel there's a lot of room for the stock to run with RSI only being 50. So, you know, good call. And yeah. then, yeah, and the latest one was we did cross the 21 day moving average as well. So, looking positive, it's, it's definitely going to be pending on earnings. I think there's going to be a lot of anticipation going into it. So, exciting stuff, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, good chart, Sean. Yeah. <clears throat> Awesome. So this next one is, I don't know why the square is there. Oh yeah, no, I do know why the square is there. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this next one is Ford, not one I brought up before and not one yeah, I really look new, at that much. It's a new name um, for us, right? It is, yeah. I, I kind of wanted to highlight this one because obviously it's in the auto sector as well. I kind of follow that um, a little bit, obviously with Tesla, Neo, et cetera. So it'd be interesting to see what kind of the earnings call says around kind of the supply issues and all that kind of stuff, demand issues. Um, but yeah, this one is more of a technical setup for me. And you can see where the volume profile really bulges out of that $12 level. Um, obviously, the price action is around that kind of level within the chart that you see. So it does make sense. Um, but you've also got the trend line, well, kind of resistance trend line kind of coming down as well. Um, and you can see the big yeah, uh, white arrow right in the middle of the screen there. And that is to kind of come up, retest it, and move up to kind of 1380, which you're going to have to take my word for it as a nearest solid support, uh, nearest solid resistance, sorry. I'm um, going back a little bit. I just don't want to crowd the chart too much. Um, and you know, I said about the, the square. I don't know why I've drawn that. I actually don't know why I've drawn that. So I'm going to kind of ignore the square. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, I think there's still basically um, room to move for Ford. Um, it's a nice little wedge. And it's just a case of just breaking through it. It's a nice setup, nice and clean as well. So not too many kind of jagged days. It's a slow moving stock. So it could be one of those for, for people who don't like too much volatility if it is obviously to play out. So uh, yeah, what are your thoughts? You know, one thing too, the uh, options contracts aren't going to be nearly as uh, juiced and, and pricey as you might get mm. in some of the other names we talk about. So that's also, uh, you know, when they when Ford moves, it may not move, you know, three, four dollars at a time, but it doesn't need to, from an options perspective, to still get some good uh, returns because the options are priced to not move that much. So for what that's worth. And then uh I'm going to take a stab at the square there because, and it's funny, we were talking again about there's just so much going on 
the, we've got yeah. our heads in a million. I did, I did it Friday night, so yeah, you've already <laughs> forgotten. Yeah. It's it's blur. We looked at, but what I'm calling out here is the resistance. I think that's just some some real resistance. That's you know proven what that line of uh, that you've drawn out there that we need to get above and break through to get the trade for the breakout trade. So. You know, that's really, I think, what you're highlighting there is it? it was really tested. It wasn't like a quick touch point. It was like you gave it a go and then pulled back. So uh, breaking exactly through, right. I think, will be meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. I, you just reminded me of why I put the square there. So thank you for that. And nice. thank you to the watchers, really, more, more than me. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah, well, that's okay. Not much on the Ford side for me, but uh, the difference is uh, the implied move on earnings of Ford is about 5 6%. Whereas for the previous stock, which was Palantir, was about 13 14%. And some of the other stocks that we talk about, which are much more volatile, are 20, 20, you know, 15 to 20%. So, yeah, you would not see that much of a major move. I mean, there are a couple of, um, um, I think, wasn't like a couple of weeks ago that Ford mentioned that they are actually cutting down on their lightning Ford Lightning uh, production. Oh, is that right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I think so. I think that's the news came out a couple of weeks ago. And um, the latest one that I heard from Ford was that they are now shipping um, Tesla adapters to all the Ford users, uh, EV car users. So that's... Mm. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, Tesla. I, I don't yeah, I don't track Ford anymore since uh, I, I divested from my positioning. But uh, yeah, I mean... It's a slow moving stock, let's put it this way. It's not as exciting as Tesla or any others. No. Yeah, that, that's a nice little shout out to Tesla being a first mover, always ahead of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Sean? Sorry, I throw it back to you. Oh, no, it's all right. It's all right. We're done with Ford. Awesome. We're done with Ford. Moving on. It's a good chart. It's a good chart. Thanks again for bringing this one forward. Ford, Ford. <laughs> So yeah, you can obviously follow me on Twitter slash X and I, I'm posting quite a lot now around charts kind of daily. Um, it's part of my routine to kind of get up early in the morning, kind of go through a, bit, a few charts and stick them out there to obviously help everyone that's kind of following kind of perceived charts, etc. cetera. Um, over on the YouTube channel, I go live every Friday now, um, 15 minutes before the market close. So go ahead and join me over there, stick some tickers in there. We can have a little chat around the markets going in the week. And um, I've got a hood, a Robin Hood video coming out tonight, I believe. I've just got to edit nice. it, get it out. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it for me, really. I don't really have a newsletter at the moment, so I'm um, kind of putting that on hold. So yeah, that's it. Over to you, Nate. Thanks, Sean. That's good stuff. And uh, shout out to retail trader Rob. I agree. He agrees with everything we were saying about with respect to Ford, basically, with that, uh, oh, that resistance level breaks, we get moving. Good stuff. All right, guys. Keep it going. And uh, I've got two charts I got. Rambus, RMBS, and next Alibaba. So hopefully those are of interest. Both report this week, right? And um, quick, uh, you know, let me kind of shout a shout out to I guess uh, Trader AZ. Jump back to NXPI is what I was trying to say. NXPI earnings are on the fifth, so keep an eye on that. That's tomorrow after after market. So interesting. Uh, I don't know how I missed that, but I did. And uh, Rambus, same kind of situation here, right? Where we've got a nice setup. And earnings coming through. And normally I like to trade heading into earnings, but here we are. I like I really like this setup here. So I wanted to bring it forward. We talk about NVIDIA all the time. We talk about AMD. We talk about a lot of different stuff in the semiconductor space. But Rambus is kind of like off the radar a little bit. It's a smaller cap company. And uh, but the, the chart, if you zoom out, has looked really nice uh, over the course of the last year, really. And so we've got this kind of push above and now retest of the highs we had earlier last year, mid last year, summer last year. And I'm hoping that these levels hold and there's a lot of reason to think they might. We've got anchored volume weighted average price, anchored VWAP that's coming up as support right along with the 50 day moving average and a nice bounce Friday right on this big volume shelf, right? You see that volume shelf there, Sean? I know you you spot these faster than I do. And uh, <laughs> it's a nice big long one that sticks out there. And if we can get a bounce here, I think it tries to get back to 75. Um, I don't know. It's kind of straightforward. We've got RSI. K. now that you mentioned it earlier, RSI is above 50, but plenty of room to run higher. Do you, do you see anything else on this chart? I think no, too I'm early. I switched it up, mixing it up. <laughs> Confusing us. <laughs> the interesting thing that I was looking for RMBS was in the last 17 quarters, they have not missed a single EPS or revenue. 17 quarters? Is 17 quarters, yes. 
So since the last miss was in 2019 Q2. So since then, they have not missed a single EPS or revenue. That's impressive. I mean, is there records? Do we have records for that? Can we call, you know, the stat guys in? <laughs> like in the semiconductor space and then just in general what the records are. I'd love to know. That's good stuff. Well, yeah, I think it's continuing, you know, to look strong. So maybe we get another strong earnings report tomorrow. Sean, what do you think about the chart here? Technicals looking good to you? Technicals are looking good. I think getting above that 68 level was, um, like you mentioned, very, very important. Does this um, kind of coincide with NVIDIA and AMD much, or is it just kind of a, a lone wolf it's price mo movement? It like tr it does move with it, but not. it's not correlated like 100% or, or anywhere near it. It does move on its own. I like it, lone wolf a little bit, yeah. Um, so see, I find that quite appealing, sorry. Right. No, exactly right. It'll have these like sharp pullbacks and then bounces. And so it give you a little bit more uh, opportunities. And um, yeah, no, I agree with you. It, instead of just trading um, what everybody's trading, you find these stocks that move a little bit different. Is, is that what you're getting at? Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly right. So a bit more independently with their movement. Um, and the, the, the other thing I was going to say is if you drew like a little Fibonacci from the low of kind of around 10th of January um, up until the kind of 29th of January, you've got that kind of 50% retracement as well, alongside all the supports that you mentioned with the Good eye. Um, OVWP. So it's just an extra kind of confluential point there. Um, so just, yeah, thought you might like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah, the FIB, I'm going to actually uh, apply that and see where we're at exactly. It does look like it's right at the 50% mark. Okay, you yeah. like to get in on trades at that point as well, like, you know, get yeah. that 50% retracement? Yeah, exactly. And then I'm also looking at the options, man. I mean, it's, it, it's a monthly option. So this is not a weekly options. for. Right. So it, it's getting giving you almost like 2% a week. So 4%, the next expiration is 16 Feb. You're for, a, let's say, 67.5 strike price, you're getting almost 300 to $330 in premium. Yeah, the premiums are juice. I think the spreads are kind of wide, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It's a but, it's uh, a thirty dollar spread. Yeah, so yeah. there's a little bit of a spread there, so that makes it a little tougher to trade on the option side. But uh, like you said, um, the premiums there. If you're getting in and you're selling them, you can get some nice nice fat premiums juice there. All right, good stuff. Hopefully, we see semiconductors continue to move higher. Who would have thought? I mean, you think they would have cooled off by now? But nope. All right. This is the opposite. <laughs> so <laughs> Alibaba has totally cooled off and going the other direction. And, you know, Sean, we were talking about the, the you know, kind of all the Chinese stocks just having the heavy weight recently, all the news. But now there's other news coming in. It might actually help and, you know, move those stocks higher. So it's an interesting kind of risky space. And uh, the way I kind of see things shaking out, I'd really love to get your guys' take on on these two Kind of thoughts because i don't really have much of a bullish upside opinion right now to me it's more you know we're in this downtrend here for baba um it's been going on going all the way back to the summer of last year and when everything else reversed in november this just continued to sell right and along with i think a lot of other other chinese stocks and so we i've got the since that sell off and the big gap down um i've got an anchored vwap that comes in it's been pro providing resistance We've got the trend line providing resistance. We got the 50 day moving average, which you almost can't even see because it rides that trend line. And there's three points of resistance there right at this volume shelf. Yeah. And I think we reject and go back to the bottom of the channel, which, you know, that would put us down near 60, I guess. Um, but more likely, I think maybe we just maybe we found a bit of a bottom at 70 and you know dipped a little bit lower but maybe this is where it starts to consolidate and that was that's what that second kind of choppy arrow i drew out is is maybe we just kind of hold court here right at the 50-day moving average and let things you know consolidate for a bit for lack of a better way to put it um who should i throw to first i've been, I've been trying to confuse you guys all day sean i'm going to you first what do you think about baba <laughs> Yeah, so one thing I would say is um, obviously they do have earnings before market open on Wednesday. So that will definitely throw a spanner in the works as well in terms of price action. Um, the other thing I was going to say is HSI. Obviously, it's the Chinese index or the Hang Seng index. And it's at the bottom of the channel. So imagine this channel you've drawn here. Um, and you see that kind of arrow that's pointing down that you've kind of predicted. That's where the HSI is now. Um, obviously, it could keep following the, the, the channel down below. But obviously, if it, you know, kind of used to come through. Um, that they're going to you know, provide stimulus for the economy. 
which is right. kind of all, all we're hearing around the kind of Chinese sector at the moment is kind of is the stimulus coming? Um, is a big paycheck coming basically through for the for the economy? Um, so that would be interesting to see. And obviously, Barber will obviously go up as a consequence. The market also said that's good. For us. Um, but yeah, for me, I'm in this as well. And we can <laughs> it's good stuff. It's good stuff. And um, we might be breaking up a little bit there, Sean. It might just be on my end. But Kay, no, no, no. Sean was breaking up as I well. I was a little bit. Okay, yeah. what would you what would you add? Because I did catch most of that. What Sean's got going is he's getting in a little bit early. Just yeah. like just so, so Sean does trade or do, does it trade a lot of Chinese stocks. So he has definitely more um, you know, I would say, you know he's more familiar yeah. with them than yeah, we more are. More familiar sure. with it, right? Also he's closer to mainland China as compared to us. But anyways, <laughs> that's not the point. The, the point I was trying to make is um, I'm still not comfortable at these levels. <clears throat> I don't track HSI, so I really can't comment on that. But unless we see a break in the trend, even though, yes, the volume shelf is higher at that, that it's supposed to break that trend. But, you know, with the BABA and the Chinese economy, you really don't know until things play out. And it's always, you don't really get to see really what's happening now from what i have heard at least you know talking to friends um who generally do uh, chinese stock trading is uh, there's another stock called pdd it's called pindodo so that's like a, a a cheaper version not a cheaper version but it's like uh, for people it's much you get cheaper products on that as opposed to uh, aliexpress or even uh, whatever the alibaba's main site is uh, so that has become that has become very popular uh, nowadays in china uh, I, I have not done this. is just an anecdotal example I'm, I'm sharing with you all. Uh, something to look into if, if you invest. I personally don't like to invest in Chinese stocks because I just don't have the visibility and I'm just not comfortable. Yep, you gotta, you gotta be paying attention and you gotta manage your risk in a major way there, right? Like I tighten up my spot and my stop losses when I'm investing or trading in, in stocks like this for sure. Um, but yeah, I think that there's, it's worth looking at here for either a short or to see if it holds up. And you've got a really clear line that if it breaks above that we, we could be off to the races. And uh, that would be, you know, looking at that 50 day moving average effectively. Again, we've got the trend line and the uh, anchor VWAP right there. And if we do break higher, the next anchor VWAP was from the, the highs um, way back in July. That would target around eighty dollars, right? That would be like the next target point I would be getting at. So if we do get a move higher, look for eighty to come in as like maybe a bit of a, a resistance, eighty, eighty-two, something like that. And um, yeah, let's see if it happens. But right now the trend is definitely lower. So right, follow the trend, don't fight it. That's the way I look at it. And Sean, your picture is cleared up, so I think we might have you back. Good to have you back. Yeah, I think I had too many windows open. Can you hear me okay now? Yeah, <laughs> yes. loud and clear. Uh, the good news. If whatever happens to Barbara, I can just say, "Yo, I definitely said that." <laughs> yeah, you were all over it. Sean nailed it again. <laughs> Sean nailed it. <laughs> so, you guys, if you're looking for more from me, you can find me on X at Trader Nate here. I'm also uh, writing for Wolf, so I posted to every Sunday uh, for Wolf's newsletter and uh, help write some long form on Sundays for him as well. And then uh, at Trader excuse me, at a trader's education on Substack, which is my newsletter with daily posts. I also put trade ideas out. We've got DraftKings came out today, actually. We've got some things there. I've got Crisp most recently, CRSP, CRISPR, um, where I've got both, K. Okay, I've got covered call and cash secure put ideas on those on that all one. Right. I'm going to look um, at that. Yeah, and then potential breakout trades, all kinds of good stuff going on in the newsletter. So be sure to check that out. And uh, with that, I will hand it over to Kay. And uh, by the way, guys, if you are listening in, be sure to like, 
smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Appreciate everybody's support. And uh, over to you, Kay. What do you got to, for us awesome. today? Awesome. Thank you. So we have two tickers this week, and both are reporting earnings. One, I will, I am actually in a trade, um, and one, uh, I probably will be staying away. So the first one is uh, Cloudflare Net. We have covered this a um, few times on the channel here. Uh, but what really stands out right now is uh, looking at their earnings. Uh, most recently, they were part of the whole controversy where they fired the person um, and the, the, the girl recorded the whole conversation. I don't know if you guys saw that. It was pretty popular on TikTok. People were posting that on LinkedIn. So anyways, so Cloudflare was in the news because of all that good stuff. But going back to the technical analysis here, as you can see, we do see an uptrend here. We see higher highs and higher lows. So that is a good sign getting into the earnings. That's one. We also see a very good volume shelf you know, building out over there. I think that's around a little bit above the 77, 78 level. That's where the volume shelf majority of it is. And we are going into earnings where there's a lot of RSI room to run. And on top of it, there's a lot of bullish momentum. We saw 26 up revisions on the stock as opposed to just one down revision. So I think analysts are feeling it that there will be a lot of uh, positive news coming out of Cloudflare, uh, especially with just a general trend of most companies moving away from their on-premise infrastructure. So, you know, these kind of companies like Okta, Cloudflare and others, they just are going to become bigger as they, you know, uh, move on. Um, and they had been, they have had a very tremendous um, um, earnings history. I think they did miss a revenue two quarters ago in March 2023. But since then, I mean, they really doesn't have, they don't really have, that was the only miss they had. Uh, and they have had buy ratings from analysts throughout January. So I'm very positive getting into the earnings um, because the stock, the implied volatility is 104%. So you're going to get some very juicy premiums if you're selling a CSP or if you're buying a call option. Uh, I mean, long, long rated call option, you might be able to pull it off, especially because the implied moves are generally pretty high for this company as well. Let me tell you exactly how much is the implied move. One second. Thing we are looking at uh maybe I, one second so i'm i'm really liking the way this is setting up 10 percent. Uh, you got a 10 percent nice implied move yeah so that's that's not bad at all i could tell take 10 percent all day sorry okay i didn't mean to jump in there i was just gonna say while you're looking that up that i was looking at this earlier um as well on my own charts and the 50 day moving average and 20 day moving average right here is support and like on your chart the, that that whole sell off from june basically until november and then participating with the rally in november like that's just a really nice place to for consolidation and then boom here we go off to the races and i don't see why we wouldn't continue running on a good report from from cloudflare so I like this chart yeah i really like it too um really nice setup if we can get above that trend line and come down, maybe we test it, obviously, with the, with the earnings. But I think, like you said, with the 10%, isn't it? So that would be about that. So it might get a bit of a pullback just after the announcement, perhaps. Um, and then that might be a spot to get in if you haven't already played the earnings, of course. But um, just generally, that kind of line running across the screen, about 73. And um, we've got a few resistance points kind of going on the left side of the screen. Obviously, it's acting as support on the right side of the screen. So, again, that's, that's a nice thing to see. Um, and like you said, the RSI seems to be a bit of a trend tonight. The RSI kind of hovering around yeah. 50 for a lot of stocks. So that's, yeah. that's interesting. I didn't really realize that until tonight. So yeah. continue. I, I just, I, yeah, I'm surprised too. Like most of the stocks we are covering, the RSI is like like dead at 50, between 45 and 50. It's like amazing. So much room to run. But if you look at SPY, right, it's right at the top of, and yeah. then, oh, you know, quote unquote over overbought or over yeah overbought for a while now so yeah. yeah that can continue to run given that all these other stock all these you know names still have room to move higher so yeah and, so. and also if you think about it right most of the th most of these are if you're talking about trading here right so you're not going to hold the stock you once you get into profit and and i and i hope folks who took the sofi trade last week uh, they got out with a 20% gain or whatever the percent gain was because if you held it you were down 12% for the week so, you know, especially yeah. if you're playing options, you got to get out as soon as you, you know, you hit your target levels. Yep. hundred percent. And you know, one thing I always recommend, I'll just jump in real quick is if you get a big move higher, 
a big push that's not hitting your target level just yet, I scale out because the premiums yeah. juice. And even if you get a pullback and then move back, you know, gradually to that level, you probably end up with the same or a little bit less of a pre of a price because the momentum fades a little. And so the options price, if it's short dated, will also fade. So, yeah. Uh, I'll, give, I'll give you a, a statistics that I found yesterday. So while I was doing the SoFi analysis, generally when uh, on the earnings, the volume jumps in from anywhere between 40, 45 million to let's say 120, 140 million, right? That is the generally on the earnings day. This particular earnings day, the volume was 270 million. Oh, wow. That's why you saw that big gap up on SoFi chart with about 20 plus percent. And then, of course, once you have a gap, generally it does a gap fill, right? Whether it's on the you know downward gap or upward gap, right? There is a gap fill at most of the times. That's exactly what happened with SoFi. Well, anyway, yeah. more, yeah. more on that on my video. So, oh, like, nice. Yeah. Yeah, you should plug that real quick. When is that coming out? It's coming out tomorrow. I'll be posting it tomorrow. Nice. I'll look forward to that because, yeah, that was quite the immediate gap fill if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Should we keep it rolling? Yeah. Sean, do you have anything on this chart? No, no I've already set my pace on this chart. Awesome. All right. All right. Moving on to the next one, a firm. Um, this is also reporting earnings. Both stocks are reporting earnings on Thursday. Um, so this one, um, I'm not a big fan of BNPL, but as you can see, the stock was $15 back in November. Now it also hit its all-time high, or at least in the in the near term, to fifty-two dollars. So there's there's a lot of momentum, especially being in the fintech space. A lot of companies use it. Uh, they have had a pretty decent, uh, you know, guidance on their GMV, and that is amazing. But look at the implied move; it's eighteen percent, as opposed to Cloudflare, which is about ten percent. So you're looking at about seven eight dollars of the implied move. Uh, Wall Street has a hold rating on this one. Wall Street has a buy rating on that on not, uh, Netflare, sorry, on Cloudflare. Uh, but we do see a very strong support coming on the Fib level at thirty eight, and there is also a confluence with the volume shelf there. You can see uh, pretty decent volume there. Uh, and then put to call going into the earnings is 0 0.59 with one sixty nine percent implied volatility. So. If you are big into a firm, you could take advantage of it. I'm going to stay away. Um, but that's how I'm looking at the chart right now. There, there are different levels, but the volume starts to dry down after 38. And until you get to 24, that's when more volume picks up. Uh, so that's what, how I'm seeing the chart. But I'm, I'm staying away from this. I'm not getting into this trade for What do you think, Sean? Yeah, I I think for me, the, the, it's not a very nice chart, um, to be honest, in terms of the price action, not the way you've displayed it. It's beautiful. Um, but basically, since the turn of the year, I think, no, just before the turn of the year, it's just been kind of trailing down, just kind of dribbling down. Um, and that's kind of channel. And obviously, I, I'd be more interested after the earnings report, whether it be negative or positive, and playing it off that and between the levels that you've drawn. Um, but just looking at this chart, it doesn't doesn't fill me with much joy, especially being below the 20 and the 50 as well. Um, you said, obviously, the support at the 38% level for the Fibonacci. Um, again, I think it's not as solid as it could be, I think. I think it's just trailing down a little bit, like a, a lower low. Um, but yeah, I'm not a big fan of this chart, but I'm, I'm interested in what happens with the earnings report, or at least post earnings report. So I see a very clear setup here, you guys. Um, mm. and $44 level is probably right in line. So for those that like to trade a firm, like I do think if you're if you're bullish, the setup is here. It's like you said, Sean, been dribbling, right? Not not looking good, but it's kind of formed a very clear trend line from that peak down to where we're at. You could draw a clear line, I think, from that top to the tops of all of these recent candles that have been rejecting and back below the 20 day moving average. And I think that if we break above that line it's probably going to break above that 44 dollar level as well and it's right around the same spot and that you know close above 44 that's when i would <clears throat> excuse me get bullish um <clears throat> it looks like <clears throat> excuse me that's a little bit of profit taking was here a little bit and yeah. after a huge run up and so why not that seems healthy to me you break that trend continue higher and keep the trend running i think you're right bnpl is is actually kind of kitchen back on so we'll see yeah no that's a pretty good i that's a pretty good trade idea because you still have about three three and a half dollars on the stock which is what nine percent eight nine percent if you're trading yeah, yeah. right 
you still have plenty of room to run. Sorry, I was doing my best Patrick Mahomes impression. Did that work? Anyways, <laughs> yeah, you'd still have plenty of room to run, right? And uh, RSI would also be in a little bit better spot. It's already in a fine spot. Above Similar, Ravens, about right? 50 you're looking right. at. Another RSI with 50. So I actually kind of like this for a potential setup. I'm going to... Okay, you win this week for me for adding to my... Oh, both uh, of them? All right, I win this one. Yeah. I brought both of them, right? No, yeah, I, yeah. I personally don't <laughs> like to play a firm. Uh, I, I, it's too rich for me to play. If it was $20, I would play a firm. But uh, at 50 I have better options that I can get more. And if I end up owning it, I'm happy owning uh, that stock, underlying stock. So yeah, so that's it for this week from my side for both Net and Affirm. Of course, you can follow me on X. Uh, I do provide daily updates, especially during the earnings season. You will see a lot more updates from me on that. And then we talked about the videos. I do have a YouTube channel. You can follow me if you are a SoFi fan. I generally track SoFi pretty closely and I often do multiple updates and I do write on Substack as well. Nice. I'm looking forward to the uh, the information on SoFi for sure. You said that's tomorrow you're going to drop that? Tomorrow coming up, yep. Sweet. Definitely looking forward to that. You guys, um, I feel like we've got a lot ahead of us this week. I love the charts, so thanks again for bringing it. And for everybody who's out there listening, and Zion, shout out to you. Appreciate that you appreciate our analysis on Baba and for tuning in. Um, I, I really think that you know we've got clear levels yet again, which – We've talked a lot in the past, by the way. I don't want to take clear levels for granted. We've had many weeks in the past where we're like, I don't know, you know, markets are crazy and we, we just really don't have clear direction. And markets have given us clear direction. I mentioned buy the dip and follow the trend. Sean, you're saying higher highs and higher lows. Like until it's not like this is the, this is the way I like to trade. Just follow the trend and go with it and take advantage of those opportunities when they present themselves. So no need to take outside risk, right? Like, you, you've got things lining up for you. Take solid trades. If they don't work, cut them and wait for the next one because they are plentiful. There's tons of trading opportunities out there. So definitely looking forward to it this week, you guys. And uh, I think I'll be trading DraftKings this week just for what that's worth. Um, ahead of earnings, ahead of the big game, like a lot of reasons for people to get bullish. And I will say this, though, short-term options if you're trading options because the the ones that expire on the 16th, their post earnings and the, the premiums. Unless you own DraftKings and want to sell those options, that's a great trade, right, Kay? But uh, yeah, otherwise, that's where I'm, my head's at this week. Just wanted to put that out there for what it's worth. Sean, I'll throw it over to you. What, what are your final thoughts for this week? So obviously, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're trying to build towards 1,000 subscribers. And obviously, that's a goal that we want to hit by the end of the year. Um, but generally, if, the, if lots of earnings, is actually more than last week, as you mentioned earlier on the, on the stream, Nate. Um, so it's just kind of taking a step back and just you know relaxing. Just enjoy the momentum. Enjoy the results that have come from the earnings reports and kind of play on it post uh, post earnings. At least that's what I'm going to be doing. It's taking a bit of a step back. It was a bit of a busy week last week. Um, so I'm just going to do that kind of whole less is more um, kind of mantra, shall we say, for, for this week. But yeah, that's it for me. Enjoy your week. <laughs> Smart. I like it. How about you, Kay? So before I before I say my piece, I believe Trader AGAZ asks, what, what are your thoughts on hood earning? Yeah. Yeah. And so, a shot you cover. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, go, after you, Kay, you're going to throw uh, it over to Sean? I think Sean generally covers hood a lot. So. <laughs> yeah. So I basically had a yeah. So I basically had a trade idea, which is kind of floating around the kind of um, my anticipation around the earnings report that's coming out on the 13th of February, which is a couple of Tuesdays' time. Um, so obviously to to get my full thoughts, watch the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, of course. Um, but generally, it's kind of playing with the market, um, the idea of the market of how it kind of performed in Q4, of course, in, in November, December, it rocketed up, um, and where people are going to be playing, placing those trades, placing those investments, it's got to be Robin Hood. Um, and, and likewise, Bitcoin as well. We're not 53% in Q4. Where are people buying crypto? Where are people doing that? They're, they're hearing off their friends, etc. So it's more of a kind of logical thought process behind this, this earnings report. But that's kind of all I have around that. The levels and everything else you have to watch the video for. So yeah, I'll see you over there. <laughs> I, will, I will not spoil that. I'll just say there's key anchored VWAP support right here where it's been kind of <laughs> flatlining. So really curious to hear what you have to say there, Sean. Good stuff. All right, Kay, back over to you, sir. Um, I mean, just 
play it safe enjoy the the process i guess from me i'll i'll be focusing on the tickers i talked about there are a couple other tickers that i'll I'm also looking at um so yeah that's pretty much if you want to follow uh follow along all three of us on twitter i guess we do provide our tickers uh, on twitter on the day we take the trade so yeah that's it from my side all right guys well it's been another great week uh like i said i think it's i just read right before we went on like over 100 uh you know stocks reporting this week we had the huge tech names last week uh, markets are making new highs and we've got a bunch of trade ideas continuously dropping so again check us out on x on youtube especially these guys channels on youtube and if you aren't already subscribed to the trading triangle please do so we have that target of a thousand subs this year and we are marching along nicely as sean said so with that have a great week of trading ahead and thanks again for tuning in and sean and kate thanks again to you guys for all your help this week Thanks. Thanks, you guys. See you next week. See you guys.